please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 chemistry questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. We now attempt the last three of the problems or questions in problem four. Again, let's just read the problem again. First, three moles of nitrogen and nine moles of hydrogen were added into a volume variable reactor with a smooth piston as shown in the figure. Next, the ammonia synthesis reaction proceeded at constant temperature and constant pressure in the presence of a solid catalyst. After the reaction reached an equilibrium state, the mole fraction of ammonia was 50%. The volume of the mixed gas was 3 liters before the reaction. All gases can be regarded as ideal gases. Question 4 is calculate the equilibrium constant to two significant figures. Question 5. Line X in the figure on the right shows the time course of the amount of ammonia formation. When the reaction conditions are changed as below, which of the lines A to E will be obtained? If 1. A catalyst with higher activity is added and 2. The temperature is raised. And finally, question 6 is the figure on the right shows the time course of the apparent rate of ammonia formation under the same reaction conditions that give line X above. Which of the lines F to I is correct? We need to review three concepts to solve this problem. First is the law of mass action. This will help us compute the equilibrium constant. Again, if you have this balanced equation here, then the equilibrium constant is just this product here. Here, the items in the brackets are the reactants, reactants in the denominator and products in the numerator. So the product C, product D, reactant A, reactant D, and the exponent are just the stoichiometric coefficients. That is the coefficient here in the balanced equation. You have C, D, A, and B. C, D, A, and B. And this bracket here, what we mean by that is actually is the molarity of the solution. So we have here, if we have, if we're looking for the molarity of A, that's just the number of moles of, of A over the total number of liters of the entire solution. So this is to compute the equilibrium constant. Then we need Le Chatelier's principle to actually know how the equilibrium will shift. So will there be more products or more reactants if we did something to the system? And the principle states that the equilibrium shifts to the direction that reduces the effect of the disturbance. And so if this is an, at equilibrium, for example, if we added more products, so what will you do with those extra products? So the way to reduce the amount of the added products is to make more or rather make more um, reactants, right? So the, the result is that the equilibrium will shift to the left if you add more products. If you add more reactants, so what will we do with those reactants to, to maintain equilibrium? We need to consume them. And so the reaction will proceed to the right if we add more reactants. So something like that is Le Chatelier's principle. And lastly, we need the collision theory reaction rate to compute or to understand what happens to the rate of reaction. This theory states that the reaction goes faster with more successful collision of particles. So we mean, we mean here that in the collision theory, we state that maybe the reactants on the products are made up of particles and they collide and the reaction occurs because of their collision. And the more collisions, that will mean more, more reaction, right? It's faster reaction. So for example, a, a successful collision would be one with where the orientation is correct and there is enough energy, right? So to increase the speed of the reaction, we need more particles to collide and that means higher concentration. 
you also need a larger surface area for the collision. And so that, that's why we, we need, uh, that's why we, we get a faster reaction if we have, if we, we have powdered reactants than if we had just a bulk solid, for example. And then we also need more frequent collisions to increase the rate. And the way we do that is we increase temperature because temperature is just the average kinetic energy of your particles. And we also have a catalyst. So if we have a catalyst that will increase the speed of the reaction, but it will not really. So, so this has something to do with the speed, but it has nothing to do with the, with the amount of the product that is produced. So that is the collision theory that we will need. So now we will try to compute the equilibrium constant to two significant figures. And we will use this law of mass action here. First, we need to write the equation so that we know the exponents here. And so that means for this equation, the equilibrium constant is as follows. That's the concentration of ammonia squared over the concentration of nitrogen times the concentration of hydrogen. And that's cube. So the concentrations here are taken at the equilibrium state. So that means while, so, so all of these concentrations are taken at the same equilibrium state. So for example, in this case, we already know from the previous problems that the amount of ammonia produced is four moles and that the final volume is two liters. So the concentration is four moles divided by two liters, two moles per liter. And again, this is after the reaction, after the reaction reached an equilibrium state. So the, the volume would be the same for for the total volume for this and for this would be the same because they, they have to be all at the equilibrium state. What differs is here we, we know that the amount of nitrogen left after the reaction reaches equilibrium is one mole and hydrogen that's three moles. And so these are the concentrations that we have. Now we just have to plug them in here. So from one, meaning from this, we get the following. So we just plugged in here, squared, one half, and then three halves cubed. And if you compute that, you get 64 over 27, which is equal to this. And we need two significant figures, so that's why we need 2.4 in here. Now for the fifth question, we are told that this line X, this uh, solid line, is the is the curve for for the given for the given reaction and let's just look at the x-axis the x-axis is the reaction time so this this is just t from zero to infinity and on the y-axis we have the amount of ammonia that's formed and what we see here is that after some time here the ammonia does not really the amount of ammonia does not really change this is when we say that equilibrium is reached when there is no change in the amount of the product here. From here to here, the ammonia increases. So it starts at zero, it increases, increases, and now there is no change in ammonia. We are asked, what if we added a catalyst with a higher activity? What will happen? So let's do this first. First, if we're talking about a catalyst, it will increase the rate of reaction. So a cat that, that is precisely what a catalyst does. And increasing the rate of reaction means that we, we achieve the flattening here faster. So instead of flattening around here, we, we, we do it faster. We start flattening up here, right? So the only things that could do that would be this line A or this line D, right? And so yeah, that's what we mean by the bend comes before the line X because the bend is where this bend is where equilibrium is reached. So the only lines that do that are A and and D, or rather, yes, A or D. And there's another effect. A catalyst has no effect on concentration. And that means that it really doesn't have an effect on the amount of, of the product formed. And so it has to have the same flat line. The level of flat line would have to be the same as X. 
And so that leaves us this line here, this line A, because line D, we, we have we have we have something that has less amount than X, and that's not what a cattle what a catalyst does. Catalyst will just increase the speed, so the bend comes earlier, but the equilibrium amount will just be the same. It has no effect on the amount of of products formed. And so the answer for this, so again here the equilibrium cons concentrations are the same without the catalyst. That that just means that the curve levels at the same level. Uh, or rather the flat line level is the same for line X and that is actually just line A in here. Now let's do the same analysis for the second condition which is we raise the temperature. Again, if we do that according to, to the collision theory, raising the temperature would mean that the reaction rate will be faster. So that means the bend, that the curve flattens faster. And again, the bend comes before line X. So that could only be line A or line D. And also, this temperature, added temperature, would favor the endothermic reaction. That is from Le Chatelier's principle, because here the reaction is supposed to be emitting heat. So if you add heat, mean meaning we increase the temperature, there will be some excess temperature out here. So we can think of it intuitively as the reaction wanting to consume that temperature. Because you're adding heat, the reverse reaction is favored. Uh, we notice that the forward reaction, so this value here is for the forward reaction. Forward reaction is exothermic, meaning releasing heat. And the reverse reaction, therefore, is endothermic, meaning absorbing heat. So if you add heat, the endothermic reaction is favored because it has to be consumed to maintain equilibrium. So the equilibrium shifts to the left, to the left, meaning to the product, we rather to the reactant. We produce more reactants this time. And so what happens to the product? The product decreases because we are producing more reactants. And therefore, the flat line will be below the X level because here, the flat line is the amount of ammonia after, but because we produce more reactant, the amount of ammonia decreases. So the answer here is line D. Lastly, we want to know which of, the, which of these curves is the correct curve for the reaction rate. So what happens to the rate of reaction as time progresses? We know that the reaction approaches dynamic equilibrium. So that means that at the end, near the end, the line will have to flatten. So all of them flatten, so that's not very helpful. But at equilibrium, there is no more net production of the product. So what that means is that we have zero production. So no more reaction is going on. So it has to go to this bit here. It has to go to zero. And therefore, the answer is this curve. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!